So here, another part of this mechanistic modeling is often cables of some kind, or connector tubes, tubing, kind of thing. And here I've got a rig I set up where I've got two objects right now. And if I move one object, the cables stay connected. If I move the other object, it connects to the cables. And these are actually the cable parts here. And uh, I could grab the middle one here and uh, adjust it to sort of dynamically adjust all of these cables. And so building a rig like this is going to be helpful for this type of modeling. Let's do it real quick. I'm going to start with, uh, let's start with an end gone, or end side. Uh, we can bring this up to something like that. Let's make it just uh, one centimeter. There we go, we'll hit O. And we'll just place a couple by hand here. And so I'm going to just uh, zoom out. Still getting the hang of my pen. We'll do it this way. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to control drag. We hit T. It's a little smaller. Control drag, making sure that they stay on the same axis, kind of keeping them bundled together. There we go. And uh, let's make another one over here. here, maybe make this one a little bit bigger. This is totally up to you. This is just our beginning profile. And let's group these together. Uh, Alt-G, I'll call this uh, wire profile. And nice thing about this system we're building here is this will be completely procedural, so we'll be able to make adjustments later to any part of this. Um, and the thing we're going to do here is we're going to sweep this, but instead of just sweeping along a spline, which would work something like this, like if we came in here and grabbed a uh, sketch trying to use the pen here, but sometimes, there we go. All right, so if I had another spline of some kind, and then I used a sweep over here. And I've turned on some sort of inability to click and hold. Let's just bring in sweep. Uh, this doesn't work right off the bat because these are not connected. Let's go ahead and connect them. I can't remember if I connected them or just put them all together. I put them in here, I connect, and then put them in here. There we go, it likes that. And so that gives us a wire. But this is not procedural. Well, I mean it's procedural, but it's just not very controllable. It's not really a rig at all. Uh, besides just drawing, it'd be hard to get everything going. But in the sweep, there's some important things here under details. Remember scale. For wire rigs, you know, we're probably not going to use that a whole bunch. But uh, doing something to the rotation does allow you to you know, make it much more interesting in terms of the stepping. Okay, so that's what, sort of where we're going here, but not not yet. All right, so let's lay, name this wire profile. Our connected splines. That way we could easily add some later if we want. We'll keep that sweep around for right now. We'll get rid of that spline. Cool. 
So we're going to make a spline out of nulls. We're going to do that with the tracer. And so I'm going to go ahead and make a new null. And let's go ahead and control drag it along the z-axis. So I have three there. One, two, three. And we'll call this one start. And then middle. And then end. Great. And so now I can connect those with the tracer object. So this is one that doesn't use the hierarchy. Instead, we need to provide all the nulls we want to trace in here. So I'm going to drag down middle, and I'm going to drag down start. There we go. And I am going to say connect objects. Once we do that, you see we do get a spline there. And if I move the middle part, you see it's connected. However, it's a straight line, which is not exactly what we want. And so in that case, uh, let's come back to the tracer. This is where we have our spline connection. And under spline, we want, let's go with B-spline. And we are also going to say we want uniform points. Great. And so now, the tracer is the new spline. Move that back down. And so now, if I put the wire profile back in here, and the sweep, and then the tracer, in this order, there we go. Now, this is where we can adjust the different parts of it, just by moving these nulls. These nulls would be great if we had some way to see them, so let's do that. We'll select them all, and we'll go to Circle, and I'll change it to Z orientation so it's easier to see and maybe they're a little bit smaller in this case right and so now they're much easier to select and move around great so now you can see where this is going uh, again the amount of twisting is going to be down here under the rotation right so you can twist one way or the other You can also come up here to uh, end rotation and twist things more or less. Great. So let's uh, make it even more interesting. So now, like the end here, you can stretch things out. I can move this one. You can see how flexible and easy it is to position things. The only thing that's not so great here is that. We want these, most of the time, for this hard surface machinery type thing, you're going to want these to look like they're plugged in to some component. And so as I angle the middle, it gets, uh, it gets a little weird. Uh, it doesn't really have the angle there. So let's fix that. Under Start, I'm going to Control drag it to right about there. And the Start one, I'm going to drag as a child of Start, so it stays oriented there. And then in the tracer, I'm going to make sure that start one comes here. Great. And so now, I'm going to turn this one off. I don't even need to access it. This one essentially now is just keeping that little bit of angle there when it comes out so that it looks like it's actually plugged in to what's going on. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So I'll grab the end over here and uh, control drag that in, whoops, grab this, there we go, same thing, make it a child here, turn it off, and then add it to the tracer, the order matters here, it needs to go there, great, and so that is definitely better. I don't need to access those, they just sort of hold it in place. And there's this one in the middle, which I can move around. Great! So this is functional just kind of as is. Um, however, if you wanted to take the rig uh, sort of to the, next, to the next level here, then you could 
I'll just make two dummy objects here. Let's say this This is one thing, and uh, this is the other. There we go. And we want to connect these two with cabling. Uh, instead of making these parts a child of that, um, I'm going to sort of get them into position first. That one's going to plug in there, and then this one will plug in here. There we go. You see that the middle still works. And we'll use a constraint tag here. And so on the start, I'll go Shift C constraint. And we want to constrain the essentially parent it to this cube. So here. And same thing here. So shift C constraint. Make sure you get the right one. Same thing, parent constraint to this one. There we go. And so now these objects move. We've uh they stay connected. And if we rotate them, they should still stay connected. And same thing over here. While this works in the middle. So this is pretty flexible. Once I had it this far, or maybe right before I attached it to the cubes with the constraint tags, I would just sort of save it as a template that I could come back and pretty easily use over and over again. Again, totally procedural, so if I need to come back and uh, reduce the number of cables. Just a matter of turning this off, turning them on. I could add new cables if I wanted to uh, at any point. I want to make sure the tracer has enough. As it starts to get s stretched, if you turn up the subdivisions, things should stay smoother. That's too many. And if we needed more control points, you could do that uh, just in here. I'm going to go ahead and control drag the middle and then the middle again. And we can add them to the tracer. And so in here, in the right order, here's middle one and here's middle two. Right? And so now we have more points that we can use to move things around if that were necessary. Great, I think that's a good one.